guys, so welcome back. Um, I hope we're all doing really well. Today I have a favourites video. Now this is something that I haven't done for a while, I don't think. Not a monthly favourites in particular, but I did a Q&A on my Instagram last weekend. Somebody mentioned that they missed favourites and they wanted to see them more, so I asked you all and the response was overwhelming. So ask and you shall receive. Here is my October favourites. We're also waiting for a food shop to arrive, which is half an hour late at this point. So I may be interrupted halfway through this video, but we're just gonna go ahead and carry on. So I kind of walked around my flat uh, with the intention of picking up things that were my favorites and that I've been using a bunch and I, I've written them all down. So we have quite a mixed bag here. And I'm gonna start with beauty favorites because I feel like that's the natural place to begin. Although I know a lot of you said that you actually prefer the rest of the favorites, so like a non-beauty favorites, which, who remembers when that used to be a thing? A non-beauty favourites and the beauty favourites every month. Wow. All the content there for you. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start with my beauty favourites. I only have a couple. And I I think I already talked about this in a video previously where I was doing my makeup, my everyday makeup, but this wonderful orange product, this has just become my go-to, my favourite makeup item. I can't really get ready without this, which says a lot. So this is from Origins. It's the Ginseng SPF 35 hydrating pretty fire it has a very interesting name to me this is a tinted moisturizer and a very bare minimum tinted moisturizer it kind of bridges the gap between skincare is that my tesco's man possibly we'll see um kind of bridges the gap between skincare and makeup it just seems to transform your face it doesn't have a great deal of coverage to it although it does have just that little bit just that enough to even out skin tone and, and just give a glow but that's the thing it does the most it just makes my skin look healthy and fresh um so i kind of layer this all over i use it as a base and here he comes hang on one second okay that's done what was i talking about uh yes just love this it's really transformed the way i do my makeup i love a minimal makeup look as you probably know and this is amazing and essential for that next one is skincare favorite. Now this was sent to me from Elemis um, with a few other products from a similar range. So this is their Pro Collagen Rose Facial Oil and they sent me this along with a rose cleanser and a rose serum. So this is part of a whole rose infused range and I love rose products, especially when it comes to skincare. There's nothing better than just lathering up, layering my face with things that smell of rose, which is actually kind of interesting to me because I used to not be able to stand the scent of roses and it used to make me feel sick, but now I love it. This is actually very different to any other face oil that I've used. It it just seems to glide across my skin. It's a pleasure to use and to put on. And sometimes I find with oils, you have to really work them between your hands, warm them up, press them in, and they're never kind of silky enough to, to work in properly. Whereas this is so amazing. It makes it so great for facial massage, if you're using like a gua sha tool, which I really, really like. I feel like it properly contours out my uh, my jawline, which is never never gonna be a bad thing. Um, so it works really well with that. Also, if you just like to kind of really work your products in, it's so good. And I find anything else that I use on top of this slips on just beautifully, just really, really smoothly. So I've been adoring this face oil recently, and I just use that kind of in-between serum um, face oil, and then I'll use my moisturizer on top. And then I have a, a body favorite. So this is a body product. Um, this is actually brand new because I've just repurchased it. Uh, being completely out of my original one, which I used up to the very dregs at the bottom. I kind of stumbled across this just casually, randomly on a whim while I was strolling through other stories and other stories, as you do. Um, and they have a whole beauty section and it's not something I've tried a lot from, but I do like to kind of just test out their hand creams and body lotions because I have so many and so many different scents. Um, so this one is the Sardonyx Fire Body Lotion. It looks like this. I don't think I actually bought this um, while I was kind of testing it and playing around with it, but I went home and then I could smell this incredible smell. Um, I think I put it on my arm and it was on my clothes and the coat I was wearing and I was just overwhelmed with the fact that I needed that smell in my life. So um, I went back and I picked one up and it's just been my favorite thing to use in the morning after I've showered um, to just lather all over my body and it, it just smells so good. So it's um, got notes of dark amber, wild vanilla and hints of bloom. So it's a very musky deep um, vanilla scent, ambery scent, which is my go-to, my favorite. I love those, but it's so different because it has this like uplifting floral, almost like this citrusy scent to it as well. 
which the combination of the two doesn't sound like it would work, but it does, it's so good. Um, so yeah, this is a fresh new one, which I'm very excited to use. I love that it has a pump too. I think body lotions without a pump are so tricky to use. Then the last beauty favorite I have is a dry shampoo. I have been going through dry shampoo like there is no tomorrow. Um, so I've been doing a lot of spin classes recently. I've kind of put the running on hold for a while, um, which is actually one of the other questions that you guys asked me in the q and I did on Instagram. I have left all the responses up in a highlight on my profile. So if you follow me there, um, you can go back and read all the answers and the questions if you feel that way inclined and aren't just feeling particularly nosy um, or interested. So yes, I've been doing a lot of spin classes, maybe like one a week or three a week if I'm really feeling on it, kind of interspersed with a bit of yoga too. Um, so I've been working out a lot and I, I really don't like to wash my hair all that often. And then particularly when you are exercising a lot and sweating a lot, it just feels so necessary. I go straight home from workout and shower, but I've not been wanting to shower my hair every day because it just, it feels wrong. I don't want to damage it by overwashing it, which I know you really can do. So yes, dry shampoo has been my friend as um, much as it kind of feels wrong to me, but um, I've actually been putting this in my hair before I go as well as after. So it kind of is there to soak up the excess oils and sweat and then also afterwards to freshen my hair up. Um, so it's the super dry shampoo. I've had, I've had quite a few dry shampoos from Way in the past, but this one seems to be new. Um, this one was sent to me quite recently and it, it just smells really fresh. It kind of smells, I don't want to say like baby powder, but it, it has a similar kind of vein to it. It's very um, kind of cottony and light, which normally would not be my jam at all, but it just makes my hair feel really, really fresh. Um, this one does have quite a bit of a white cast to it, which I know some people really like to avoid in a dry shampoo. I have quite dark um, hair here at the roots at the moment, so you do see it, but um, I find it's nothing that like a little rub and scrub isn't gonna make disappear. I think the ones that do have that white cast to them really are the best dry shampoos because they just soak up everything. So I spray this in, I leave it for five minutes and then I just rub it all the way through and brush it out and it's completely fine. So have been absolutely devoted to this and can't really get through my day without it. It always takes me so much longer to get through things than I, I think it will. And I think that is just down to my pure need to ramble um, incessantly, but there we go. So let's talk about a few fashion favourites. Now, I have kind of <laughs> flooded my Instagram feed recently with this particular favourite. Um, and I'm gonna reach over and grab it. It is a trench coat. So trench coats in general, I just adore. I think the second we kind of hit September, October, all I wanted to wear was a trench coat. So um, this one I have here is from Zara. I'm gonna show you guys this a bit better later on in the week or next week because I have a video coming up, which is gonna be my yearly Zara autumn try on session. Um, I'm excited about it. Are you excited about it? I am. But this I've already just been wearing over and over. I couldn't save it. Um, it's just such an amazing trench coat. It's super long line and that's what I really was looking for. Trench coats for me, I feel like to work properly they have to be almost down to your ankles. That's the look that I like. I know that may not be for everybody um, and it also depends on your height too. So I am around 5'9", I think last time I checked. And this sits so perfectly just, just above ankle height, like mid calf for me and it's perfect. Love the color, love the oversized fit of this as well. Um, and it's just an all round amazing trench coat. So not only this one, but trench coats in general have been for me just my style pick of the moment, I think. If you're looking to introduce one thing um, into your wardrobe this season, trench coat, absolutely no question, do it. I feel like I haven't properly introduced this yet. So you guys here watching this video now feel in a very privileged position um, to be seeing it for the first time. But here she is. This is the Acne Studios Musubi bag. And I have to check that quite often because I, it doesn't roll off the tongue naturally, but this is the Masubi bag and it's in the medium size, not the small. Um, although I feel like the medium might be called the large. It's always very confusing with bag sizes. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me logically. So I got this in the brown. Um, there are two brown colors. There's a brown and a tan and they are quite different. Um, this one to me is a little bit more muted. It's less orangey in tone and it's just beautiful. I've been thinking about this bag for months and months and months now, uh, since seeing it, I think on Brittany, Brittany Bathgate, whose Instagram 
I love. You should all definitely follow her there. Um, she's also doing videos on YouTube now, I think. So um, that is a channel to be subscribed to for sure. But she has the white or the cream version of this bag. And I originally really wanted to get that one. But I thought seeing as it's autumn and really tan being um, a color that I love to wear in this season and also one that is universal all year round, I thought this was gonna be the perfect bag um, that was able to pair with a lot more outfits. So this is basically a bucket bag and I do love a bucket style bag. It has um, not only all my junk in it, but quite a lot of space in there. It has a really great little top handle and then this thick leather strap. And I just love the way a thick leather strap looks. I think it's so um, kind of cool to have a like chunky strap across body. Uh, also the way it just hangs down is very sweet too. I love this like origami detail on the side. It's just um, the leather strap tied up either side here, but to me it, it kind of feels very origami-ish. You can also take this long strap off. So you have these little buttons here where it just pops off and just use it with the top handle, which I think is kind of cool. Maybe a way that I'll wear it, um, but I do like how it just looks with that hanging down too. So um, as far as my designer bag collection goes, I haven't really added to it for a while. I feel like my style's evolving and I really wanna make sure that I'm getting the wear out of the ones they have already, as well as things that I do um, introduce into it. So I've particularly been liking bags that don't have a lot of branding on them. Um, this does say, Acne just at the top there. If you can see it, it's just kind of embossed into the leather at the front. And it's really minimal, really chic and simple. So I, I like that a lot. I'm sure you'll be seeing this a lot more to come, um, styled with pretty much anything I'm wearing over the next couple of months. In terms of price as well, it also wasn't absolutely bank breaking. I know um, a designer piece is always an investment and it's something that I think about a lot and I do save for. And um, this one is under the a thousand pound mark, which is still an incredible amount of money and something to really think about. But I think a really good entry level one. Acne is a great brand. I feel like it's pretty much timeless. That kind of very chic Scandi style will always be something that works. So yes, I'm very excitedly introducing my new bag to you. And also inside here I think is another one of this month's favourites. Here they are. Just going to clean off the fingerprints that are no doubt all over these <laughs> right now. Um, so these are a pair of Ray-Bans. I do love a Ray-Ban. I feel like they just, again, they're classics, they're timeless, they're a great brand. Um, but this is a style I've never seen before. So I wear my round Ray-Ban sunglasses with the gold uh, rims quite a bit, but I've really been um, wanting a Wayfair style. So I was kind of looking around, I was looking on ASOS, I think, which is where I got these. I don't think they're in stock there anymore, but I'll leave all the details and the actual name of this down below. So I was looking there at the Wayfarers and then I saw this style, which is very different. It's almost kind of slightly geometric. So you see how it goes like the normal Wayfarer, but I don't know, this, this little bit is a lot more square and straight across. That to me seemed very cool. Um, and they also looked a little bit less clunky than the original Wayfarers. Now, sunglasses on me, it's kind of a tricky thing. They don't always suit me. So I went ahead and ordered these with fingers crossed and I actually love them. They have been what I've been throwing on every time I need a pair of sunglasses. They're so simple. I got the black ones, although they do come um, in a tortoise shell as well, which I do have my eye on. But I think a pair of black sunglasses are just a great place to start. And the black wayfarers are just kind of like the classic Ray-Bans. So this is what they look like on. They're not massive on me, which I like, but they're not tiny. I like the way they kind of go out slightly at the side here and they're just overall a great pair of sunglasses. So definitely a favorite for me this month. And then my last fashion favorite I'll quickly mention, I've just remembered, um, is this necklace. So earlier in the month, or well, actually last month, I did some work with Masoma for the new Lucy Williams 1987 collection. It really is an amazing jewelry range and I've been wearing so many of the pieces from it um, since I got them. But this one to me has just been my absolute favorite. So it's super simple. It's a tiny, thin uh, snake chain. So it doesn't have any visible links that all interlock together very tightly. And it's quite short, not massively on the long side, although it does um, have an extender, so you can make it longer or shorter, depending on what you like. But I just love the way this looks on its own. I haven't really been layering up a lot of jewelry with this one. I've just been wearing it very simply. And I like the way it works with high necks. So particularly coming into autumn when there's a lot of jumpers and things like that. And just having this simple gold chain with them, 
I think is very cool. So that has been my favourite piece from the collection that I own so far, although there are quite a few other pieces I have my eye on, um, but also one of my favourite necklaces to wear. I know you guys are probably waiting for me to list a whole ream of books um, or book favourites off for the month uh, that I've been reading and enjoying, but sadly, once again, the book fairy has not been visiting me very often this month. Or last month either. So um, I do want to show you the book that I am currently reading. I'm not sure if it is actually ready to be inaugurated into the favourites category yet, but um, I wanted to talk about it because I know you guys would miss if I didn't uh, have a book in this video. So this is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. You can see I'm kind of halfway through it, maybe a third, two thirds. Also, please, please don't hate me for doing this. I don't have a bookmark. Um, so this is kind of the story of three women, as the name would suggest. Uh, so we have Lena, Maggie and Sloane, and each chapter is from the perspective of the different women and it kind of moves between the three. Um, so I haven't really got far enough through this book to make a good judgment of it. But so far, what I have read has been very captivating. I think I did this in a day, maybe two days. Um, so I've yet to pick it up since then. But um, what I did read, I was definitely very drawn in by. Um, so there's a lot of themes of kind of relationships, sexuality, being a woman and what that means and desires and how people see you as opposed to what you really want. Um, that's what I've kind of taken from this so far. So all the stories are very interesting and very different, but they all centre around being a woman and what that means. It's quite explicit in its content. Um, but very interesting. Um, I think one of the women, although all the stories are very interesting, one of the women I'm particularly drawn to is Sloane. I find her story very interesting. So I'm definitely going to finish this up um, and I'm interested to see how it's going to turn out. Um, the one thing that confuses me about this is there's kind of a forward to it um, by the author, a little bit of an introduction, and it states that this is a true story and all these women's stories are true and that the author went around the country collecting them and listening to these women and these were the three that really stood out to her. So I don't know if that's kind of just a plot point and that it's trying to make the story feel more realistic or if that is actually the case. So if you do know, um, please inform me down below in the comments. So as well as reading, I want to talk about some things that I've been watching and um, instead of the usuals, which are basically friends, Gilmore Girls, Frasier, on repeat all day long, I would talk about some YouTube channels that I've been really enjoying. So I, I watch a lot of YouTube, um, especially at the end of the day. I use it to kind of wind down, which is probably not the best idea. I know I should read instead and use my time uh, for that. But I wanted to talk about some of my favorite YouTubers. First of all, seeing as it is October, and in the spirit of that, there's um, Vlogtober going on, obviously. I only watch one person's Vlogtober, and it is my favourite thing every year. <laughs> I think it even maybe eclipses Vlogmas. For some reason, I, I have no idea why. I do just love this season a lot. So I have been really enjoying Jess um, from Sunbeam's Jess's channel. That was really difficult to say. Um, she is a Vlogtober pro, absolutely nails it every single year, and it's, it's kind of her thing. Um, I know I'm probably preaching to the choir right now, and you've all been watching her for years and years and years, but um, there's something about her Vlogtober, especially now that I live in London, actually, it's very interesting to see where she's going and what she's doing, but it's just that general kind of cosy vibe um, and her chilled perspective on it all which I really enjoy. Um, and then also some vlogs that I have been watching a lot are from Helen. Um, so Helen has a channel called HMF Yoga. She is a yoga teacher, which I find ridiculously cool. And the way I found her actually was from one of her What I Eat In A Day videos. Um, so Helen posts a lot of vegan keto videos. Um, if you're not familiar with that, the ketogenic diet is basically a high fat, low carb diet. And it's something I've kind of been looking into recently. There's lots of different benefits to it and lots of things that people talk about. So much information online that you could really easily Google. But um, one of the things that it's supposed to be really, really great for is anxiety, depression, um, mental clarity, better sleep, all things that I think I would really benefit from having a boost with. Um, so I've been watching a ton and ton of videos on YouTube and it's kind of quite hard to find ones that are predominantly plant-based, which is the way I would want to go with it, because a lot of them are people just eating giant steaks <laughs> every day, which is not the road I'm going down. Um, so yeah, I started watching her videos because I found that whole topic of conversation really interesting and I wanted to learn more about it. And then I just kind of got really sucked into her life. And the thing about Helen's vlogs is they are 
straight from the good old days of YouTube. They are kind of your good, classic, relatable, um, chill, home, life, follow me around kind of vlog. It feels like I'm watching something in 2010 again. If you crave the good old days when vlogging was just very simple, she does almost daily videos as well, I think, um, which is great. Massive amounts of content, I don't know how she does it. Um, and her boyfriend is Scottish too, so. <laughs> you couldn't get more relatable. Um, I've just really been enjoying sitting down with her vlogs and a cup of tea in the evening um, and then watching Jess's as well. So uh, yeah, those are my two YouTube favorites of the month. Please go and give them some love and a watch if you uh, haven't done already. So I think I'm gonna round up this favorites video here. Um, hopefully I've actually managed to film it because we're using a new camera today. Let me know what you think of this, if the quality is different. I think it's gonna be better. That's what I'm hoping for anyway but um yeah I, I pray it's actually worked so guys thank you so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed having a good old school favorites I I've enjoyed this I've enjoyed sitting down chatting <laughs> thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all soon bye do you want to say goodbye do you want to say goodbye okay bye guys